So the title for today's message is COVID-19. Everybody's favorite topic, right? We need some prayer. I'm going to pray again. Heavenly Father, we come to you now as your body, the body of Christ. And we ask that you'd be present with us. Fill us with your love. Fill us with clarity and understanding as we dive into a rather challenging topic. Um, I just pray that I would be hidden behind you, that everyone here would just experience a glimpse of Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Okay. Today we are going to be covering some potentially sensitive material. Material that some of us would probably rather not talk about. You may not like what I have to say. You might like what I have to say. But either way, that's good. Because we can still love each other regardless, right? I got a few people that are willing to still love me. (laughs) Okay. I want to say this right at the outset or onset of this message. I believe that it's important to state that whether you got the COVID-19 vaccine or not, whether you believe masks work to protect you from COVID-19 or not, whether you believe the COVID-19 experience was a pandemic or a plandemic, I speak on behalf of Storyline Eugene Church when I say you are welcome here. You with all your ideas, opinions, and beliefs. Storyline is a safe place where you are not only welcome, but you are desired. We want you here in this community. I think it's safe to say that the COVID-19 pandemic caught us all a little off guard. I know it did for me. And I think we need to remember that regardless of how deadly or how insignificant we believe the virus was, that many people were negatively impacted by the COVID-19 experience. Some people lost their businesses. Some people lost their jobs. Some people lost their mental and emotional health. Some people lost their physical health. Some people went bankrupt. Some people had friends die. Some people had friends, or some people had family members die. Some people lost friends and family members due to differences of opinion. Some people lost their faith in the government. Some people lost their faith in God. Many of us lost something. And I want to encourage us to always, always, always be sensitive to the pain and loss of others. To not be dismissive of others' pain, but empathetic and open to listen. I remember it very clearly when March 2020 hit here in Oregon. Daniel, Cara, and myself were on a walk through a public park in Fall Creek, actually right up the road from here. And we were approached by a park ranger. And the park ranger told us that come the next day, we would not be allowed on the premises. That COVID is here, the lockdown is in full effect, and that we would not be allowed to freely walk outside at that state park. From then on, our lives began to look extremely different. Can I get an amen? Soon after that, I found myself isolating from just about everyone. I had a small group of four to six people that I deemed my home group, and I limited contact with just about everyone else, with a few exceptions, like mom and dad. I did church at home with these selected few individuals, And I brought a number of Bible studies that I was a part of to a hold as I didn't want to catch the corona. My friend Joniah asked me early on 
if we would continue to connect through the pandemic? And I said no. That we needed to be safe and protect our health. And he responded by asking, well, what about our emotional health? I didn't really have a response for that one. When I saw friends and family, instead of stepping towards them to give them a hug or handshake, I gave them six feet of open space that separated them from me. Instead of telling them that it was good to see them and meaning it, my mind was consumed in thoughts of whether I was being exposed to COVID or not. Anxiety ridden and filled with fear, this was my experience. We were told that if you weren't wearing a mask, that you were putting the health and well-being of others at risk. And in fact, it was encouraged to turn those kinds of people into the authorities. I still remember when I was driving home through California back a year or so ago, and I saw a giant sign on I-5 that said, know someone who isn't abiding by CDC guidelines? Turn them in. And they had information on where you could turn in your neighbor. Due to external pressures, businesses were requiring people to wear masks and get vaccinated. Not only this, but any gatherings of more than 10 people in one place was forbidden. So birthdays, holidays, religious events, everything less than 10 people. The church was deemed non-essential. The government decided what organizations would be deemed essential, therefore being allowed to remain open, and the government decided which organizations would be deemed non-essential, therefore needing to close up shop or face the penalties. The church was one of many organizations deemed non-essential. The First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble. Well, so much for that amendment. It was President Ronald Reagan that said, Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. I wonder how long it will be before our church is deemed non-essential again. In March of 2020, for roughly two to three months, Storyline went online, and we closed our doors to the public as we were unaware of how serious this virus was. After about three months, Storyline Church lost her building on Fifth Avenue in downtown Eugene, and so Storyline found herself homeless. Quickly, Mr. Doug stepped in and provided us with a safe location to meet outside of town at the barn, and we resided there for a number of years. Early on, when COVID was in full swing, our Saturday church services had anywhere from 20 to 30 people in attendance, an all-time low for Storyline. Some people wearing masks, some people not. Some people social distancing, some people not. Some people shaking hands, some people not. Some people giving hugs, some people not. Air fives, elbow bumps, a wink, a nod. This was becoming our new normal. Many people were asking themselves and me, what is going to happen with Storyline? Is Storyline going to cease to exist? And my answer would always be the same. And it would be something along the lines of, Storyline's here to stay. We're not going anywhere. Trust me. Even if there's just a few of us, we'll continue to meet. 
Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And so we would continue to meet week after week, month after month, season after season in that cold, leaky barn. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but there was a lot of leaks in that barn come the rainy season. (laughs) Almost got soaked one day. However, it wasn't just a cold, leaky barn to us that went there. To us, it was the place where we got to be with one another and we got to be with Jesus. So bring on the cold, leaky barn. And it was in the thick of the pandemic that I remember having a conversation with our fellow storyliner, Bryce, outside the barn beside his red truck, his red pickup truck. And it was during this time that I was embracing what the media was telling us. James, you should be afraid of COVID. Don't be responsible for getting other people sick. Isolate yourself. Stay home. Save lives. Wear the mask. I was living in a constant state of anxiety because I believed that if I somehow caught COVID and spread it to someone else and they got negatively affected by it, then I would be the one to blame for not isolating, for not wearing my mask, for not being more careful. And I asked Bryce, I'm so filled with anxiety. Are you not afraid or anxious in regards to COVID and what could happen if you get it? And he said to me, James, I choose to do nothing out of fear. I don't have time to be afraid. I want to live within the realm of love. And the loving thing to me is to not be afraid. The loving thing to me is to continue to engage with and love on people. Now, I don't actually recall word for word what he said, but if you're curious, you can ask him later. (laughs) Thanks, Bryce. Uh, And it was here that a minor shift began to take place in my psyche and in my heart. Psalm 46, 1 through 3 tells us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be removed into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, Though the mountains tremble at its swelling, we will not fear. It was after this conversation with Bryce that I began to understand that any voice that encourages us to be afraid is not from God. After all, commands like do not be afraid and fear not are the most common commands in all the Bible. 1 John 4, 18 tells us, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're coughing and sneezing and running a 102-degree fever, the loving thing is to not go hang out with Grandma May or Uncle Bob. Um... You know, maybe at that point, yeah, just stay home. Drink some water. Get better. Um, But I don't want us to think, how do we see this? This is what I want to say. If you aren't sick, if you don't feel sick, please don't live in anxiety thinking you are sick. That you might get someone else sick. Um, it, it, It was so hard just to process all of that anyway. The CDC would tell us you might have COVID and not know it. So isolate. I say we shouldn't do that. And I'm saying this to you guys as much as I'm saying it to myself. 
just so you know. And it's crazy how quickly things change in our world. Up until a few years ago, if I called into work and told my employer I was sick, you know what he would tell me? What would he tell me? Get in here. We need you. But now, all of a sudden, I, along with so many others, are terrified of getting sick. Hmm. Back to our journey here at Storyline. Thanks be to God, he blessed Storyline as we continued to meet up. As time went on, our numbers at Storyline slowly grew from the 20s to the 30s to the 40s, 50s, 60s and some weeks having attendance as high as the 70s and 80s. We put in a new children's room, upgraded the kitchen with a brand new sink, built a new front door, and created a lounge section in the back with some comfy couches. And it was right at this moment that we lost our meeting location again. Due to permit and zoning issues, the city asked us to cease meeting at the barn immediately. And if we didn't comply, we would face $2,000 fines per day for every day we were found out of compliance. So what do we do? We cease meeting out of respect for the landowner. But we did not cease meeting as a community. If I remember correctly, I think we took one week off to kind of regather ourselves and figure out where are we going next. And by that following Saturday, we were able to connect with a number of different people and then find ourselves here at ECA in this gym, which I think we all agree isn't a prime location, but it's, an, it's a location. We get to still be together. And so here we are, 2023. Mass requirements have been lifted for the most part. We're allowed to meet in large groups again. Parks, theaters, restaurants, and public spaces are back to being filled with people. And most jobs are no longer requiring that you be vaccinated. I think it's safe to say that the lockdown from the pandemic is over. However, the effects from the pandemic and the lockdown are far from over. The social emotional, financial, psychological effects of the pandemic, I believe, are still alive and well. I asked a number of storyliners how difficult the pandemic was for them and what they are still dealing with as a result of the COVID-19 experience. And I want to share some of those responses with you now. Sound good? Okay. Number one. It was very difficult. It was hard being cut off from all of my friends. I'm still dealing with rebuilding connections from the pandemic, relatives who are now dealing with health issues because of being sick with COVID. Number two, the COVID pandemic was hard for me for several reasons. My father-in-law's health is bad, so that made it difficult to visit without compromising his immune system by spreading COVID, and that made us very anxious. Also, I hated going to college online. I think I'm still dealing with the after effects of anxiety of spreading COVID. The first thing that comes to mind would be watching people follow what they're being told. People not respecting my decisions in regards to what I do with my body was difficult for me. We are still dealing with high prices from the lack of supply because of the shutdown. That was number three. And four. It was not difficult for me. It was extremely frustrating because of all the governmental control. And I don't think I'm dealing with anything afterwards. Next. It was hard being restricted and having to worry all the time about getting COVID and possibly getting someone older or someone immunocompromised sick. Having to stay home all the time didn't help me get past my introverted tendencies, and I definitely feel that effect now that the lockdown is over. 
I was working at a farm doing a fair amount of solo work, so I wasn't very affected. When I did stuff in town, it was bothersome to have to do all the stuff. It was not very difficult for me as far as general circumstances. There were factors like the kids being home and needing to have me homeschool them that changed things quite a bit. But I wouldn't describe it as difficult. Part of me loved the slowdown. It was difficult for me watching so many opinions and beliefs getting thrown around and people being very passionate about their beliefs and relationships negatively affected. Knowing how to navigate that at times at work and relationships made it stressful. I would say it affected my children the most. My youngest daughter, for instance, I feel it had the biggest impact on. To this day, she struggles academically from all the stress she had at the beginning of her school years. She has an anxiety now from everything instead of the normal, fun routine of school. It is a process we continually work on with her, and it stems from COVID years. My wife and I both contracted the Delta variant, and it was draining, but seriously was no worse than other illnesses experienced with the flu personally. The most difficult thing for me was seeing the country change right before our eyes. The willingness to use lies, fears, coercion, and force to control people. I've moved on, as many have, but realizing our country went through a huge shift is going, or the country went through a huge shift and is going absolutely bonkers. I believe the COVID thing was intentional, and it didn't turn out quite like those in charge hoped it would. But we know from the Bible that the beastly tactics of coercion and force will be used again soon with much greater results. The whole world will wander after the beast. COVID shutdown happened and was soon followed by divorce. Just when I most needed social interaction, it was cut off. Difficult is likely an understatement for me. I am still struggling with building social bridges and finding and integrating with my people. I had to change my job, not just where I worked, but what I do. So many uh, people I dealt with were saying, COVID isn't real, it's made up by the government, and I don't know anyone who has died, so it can't be real. When in my own personal world, between my husband and I, we lost 15 family, friends, and coworkers. Now that the lockdown is over, life is pretty much back to nothing ever happened, except I do still leave more space in lines. In the beginning, I was pretty fearful of getting sick with COVID. I experienced a lot of worry and anxiety. There were a lot of unknowns of how long we were going to be on lockdown and it felt isolating. Seeing how people became divided and polarized, especially with differing views of the COVID vaccine and guidelines, and seeing how the vaccine mandates caused a lot of people to lose their jobs, it was really sad to see so many people struggle with their mental health and see suicide rates, depression, and anxiety go up during the pandemic. So now you guys have heard from a number of storyliners how difficult this pandemic was for them and the after effects they're still dealing with as a result of the pandemic and the lockdown. Now there was quite an array of answers some feeling extremely negatively impacted by it, and others feeling like they weren't really impacted negatively by it at all. But one of the most common responses, I think, was an increase in anxiety and storyliners now having a hard time reaching out to people and building relationships and connections. So my question to you is, how can you and I minimize anxiety? I think one of the best ways for us to keep anxiety and fear at bay is to remain in community and fellowship with one another. The Word of God tells us that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls 
for he has no one to help him up. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And I like to say that I believe anxiety, fear, and isolation are our worst enemies. And how easy is it for us to get caught up in our anxious thoughts when we are alone? Am I the only one that feels that way? How easy it is for us to get caught up in our anxious thoughts when I am alone. But how much harder is it for us to get caught up in our anxious thoughts when we're surrounded by Christ-loving individuals who are speaking life, peace, and love into our lives? It's much harder. I like to propose that we don't allow anything to come between our meeting together. Again, Hebrews says, Let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as we see the day approaching. Now, what I can't do is undo all the negative impacts of COVID on your life. And what you can't do is undo the negative impacts of COVID on my life. But what we can do for one another is be present in each other's lives. Now, this morning you came to Storyline for what reason I don't know, but you came. You're here. Maybe you came to experience connection. That would be my guess. My guess is the majority of us come here to experience community, fellowship, and connection. And the food. food. Connection's easier when you got food around. Amen. And encountering God, right? Amen. Amen. I believe we can take a look at our mission statement. And you guys know our mission statement, right? What's our mission statement? Yeah, you got it, A+. Plus. Encounter God, grow together, and serve the world. This is our mission here at Storyline. And really quick, I'd like to hone in on that second line of our mission, grow together. And we're going to go ahead and dissect each of those two words really quickly. So looking at the word grow, grow, is growth a good thing or a bad thing? Bad and good? (laughs) Okay, we're not talking about uh, extra fluff. (laughs) We're talking about um, intrinsically. I guess that's kind of intrinsically too, huh? Huh. Anyway, it's it's a good thing. Okay, it's a good thing. Does God desire us to grow? We'll say morally. Does he does he desire us to grow morally? Ginger, you're the only one. You're the only one. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. When does growth typically happen in our lives? When things are hard, right? Yep. In life's difficult times, is it better to be alone or in community? Community. Is growth a passive phenomena or an intentional phenomena? What do you think? Could be both. Maybe some examples. What, what could be a passive form of growth? Maybe a teenager growing. It's a passive form of growth. I'm getting taller. I stopped growing when I was like 13, but that's a different conversation. Uh, what's an what's a, what's a example of, a, of like an intentional growth? Studying. Yeah. Seeking knowledge, Right? Reading God's word, listening to podcasts, audiobooks. Yeah. Now let's look at the word together. What does the word together imply? Closeness. Maybe proximity? Any anything else? What does the word together imply? Similar goals. It's easier to be together when you have similar goals. 
I can definitely resonate with that. Ryan, similar goals. Um, what else? <laughs> what else does it imply? I, I'll say this. I'll say this. I was trying to lead you there, but I don't think it's, I'm going to be able to do it. Um, if we're together, that implies there's more than one, right? So that means there's at least two. And it also implies that those two or three or four or however many there are, are not over here separated, but that they're together. <laughs> I, I like that imagery in my own head anyway. And I believe that this is where we are at our strongest. We are at our strongest when we are together. Not isolated, but together. And I believe God understands that we are also stronger together. Not only God, not only does God understand that we're stronger together, but the enemy of our souls understands that we're stronger together. And he doesn't like that. And he will use whatever tactics he can to separate us. Oh, you're anti-vax? Well, you're a conspiracy theorist. Oh, you think the COVID experience was a pandemic? Huh, well, you're naive. It was a pandemic. Stop living in ignorance. Oh, you think masks work? I think they're garbage. Divide, divide, divide. This is Satan's goal, is to divide us. Division. This is all he wants. Because as long as we're divided, we can't be united. And if we're not united, guess what's not happening? The prayer of Jesus in... Go ahead. Right. The prayer of Jesus in John 17 can't be answered, where he asks that his church be united. And as long as Satan's got us divided, we can't complete the work that God is calling us into by being united. Please do not allow your opinion to divide you from the rest of the body of believers here at Storyline. We as the body of Christ need to live with a sense of urgency concerning the times we are living in. Time is of the essence. Jesus is coming again soon. And we need to learn how to love each other in spite of our differences. If you're against the vaccine, that's great. I just hope that your heart is so filled with love that when it's time, you're ready to lay down your life for your brother and sister that is for the vaccine. If you believe the pandemic was planned, that's great. I just hope that love so fills your heart that you're ready to die for your brother and sisters that don't believe that to be the case. May Jesus return and find us growing together. You and I, as I believe Jack Johnson put it, are better together. Now I firmly believe that God's church is at its strongest when its members are an active part of each other's lives. And not simply on Saturday morning during church, but especially during the work week. Because it is during the work week that you can really get to know someone and become aware of what's going on in their lives and serve them. And so I'd like to challenge each and every one of us to think of one person in this church family that you find interesting. One person in this church family that you want to better get to know. And as soon as this service is over, I want to challenge you to invite them to lunch or dinner this week. Did everybody hear that? I'm going to give you 60 seconds to think of one person. One person in this body of believers that you're going to be intentional about reaching out to and inviting out to eat this week. Is it uncomfortable? No? That's good.
that was not 60 seconds, but we're going to keep going. Now, this does not mean you are committing to meeting up with this person every single week from now until Jesus comes, but it does mean that you're committing to meet with this one person once for one hour, lunch or dinner. And I'd like to encourage you to turn off the voice inside your head that may be saying, I can't do that. I don't have time. Trust me, you have time. <laughs> we all make time for things that matter to us. And I'd like to encourage us to make this matter. And I'd like to encourage us to turn off that voice in our heads that may be saying, what if they don't want to go out to lunch or dinner with me? That'd be kind of awkward to be like, hey, you want to go to lunch? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good talking. <laughs> turn that voice off too. Trust me, they want to. And you know what? Even if they say they don't want to, brush it off. It's all good. Go find your next person. Find your one. Find your one and invite them to lunch. And let's be real. Oh, man. Who doesn't like tacos? Pad Thai? Anybody? Sabai? Tara Rin? Oh. Chow Pra Ya or whatever it's called? I think that's Vietnamese food. I love eggs. If anyone wants to invite me to Vietnamese food, please do. <laughs> I think that is pho, actually. <sighs> pizza. Come on now. You know you like pizza. I wish Brandon was here. He, he, that's his thing, man. Making margarita pizzas, that's his thing. bread. <sighs> Some good bakeries. Crestwell has an amazing bakery with a croissant sandwich. They put a, a fried egg in there if you ask them. So good. Sushi. Does anybody here besides me like sushi? There's a few people. Okay, good. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you don't like fish, no problem. Just get it without fish. So good. I could drink soy sauce. Indian food? Naan? So good. I know this isn't really a meal, but chips and salsa. Chips and salsa. You could make it a meal. You put some guac in there. That'll thicken it up real fast. And I will say this. Be the initiator. Please don't sit there and wonder, I wonder if someone's going to ask me to lunch. No. You initiate. You think of someone that you're going to ask to lunch. Lay anxiety down at the door. It's time to be a church family. And families eat together. Not only when it's convenient at church after the service, but when it's inconvenient, like during our really, really, really busy work weeks. These past few years have taught me a lot. And really quickly, I just want to share three things that I've learned. Point number one, I learned that I am easily mo motivated by fear. And the problem for me with being motivated by fear is that when I'm in a constant state of fear, I can't think rationally. And if I can't think rationally, then I can't think lovingly. And if I can't think lovingly, then I can't make the well-being of others a priority. Point number two. I learned that one of God's primary methods of governance is freedom. And that I should force and pressure no one to do anything. Even if, I, even if the thing I believe would be good for them. But rather allow others the freedom to decide for themselves how would they conduct and live their lives. God invites us to search his holy scriptures and decide for ourselves under the influence of the Holy Spirit on our own conscience 
what we will do in any of life's situations. Point number three. I learned that we were here at Storyline, or I learned that we here at Storyline are a dedicated group of individuals who have persevered in the face of great difficulty. I learned that there are some very resilient and brave people in our community. I have learned that I am cared for in this community. And I have learned that I care for people in this community. I am so grateful for Storyline and for everyone that has fought to keep this thing called Storyline Eugene afloat during these past few years. And my hope is that we continue to fight for each other. Now allow me to repeat myself. I opened with this and now I'm gonna close with this. Whether you got the COVID-19 vaccine or not, whether you believe the masks work to protect you from COVID-19 or not, whether you believe the COVID-19 experience was a pandemic or a pandemic, you are welcome here. Storyline is a community where you are wanted. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, what a sensitive topic. And it's difficult to, to even think to speak on. But I just want to thank you for being present with us and helping us have the strength to be able to love one another regardless of our opinions or beliefs. Lord God, I don't, I don't personally know if this was a difficult message for some, but if it was, I just pray that you draw near to them now, that they would feel your love, that they would feel your embrace, that they, know that, they're, that they would know that they are not alone, but that you got them. And Lord God, I hope that you would open our hearts to be inclined to listen to each other, to be present for one another, and to be sensitive to other people's losses and to be a part of their positive experiences as well. Bless us now with your presence because we need you now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen.